Welcome back, guys. So today we'll be looking at chemical equilibrium, right? An equilibrium constant. What the word chemical equilibrium? What does it really mean? Um, in the layman sense, the word equilibrium means balance, right? Or constant, right? When there is no change in something, right? So uh, what we said here is that equilibrium occurs when there are no observable change in the property of a system with respect to time. Let me explain. Let's assume we have um, a reversible reaction, a typical reversible reaction, when A can change to B, can be converted to B, and B also converted to A. Mind you, when we see symbols like this, they, they depict equilibrium, right? That there is no change in the system. When we say change, what do we really mean? Let's assume we have two boxes, right? Two box, box A and box B. Right? Let's assume this box A, this is box B. Let's assume we have five oranges here. One, two, three, four, five. And we have seven oranges here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they are connected by a pipe. Let's assume that three oranges passes from A to B at an average of one hour. So one, two, three is passing from A to B. At the same point, B is passing, three oranges is passing from B to A in space of one hour, right? You discover that before the time, we have five and three. Before they moved, we have five and three. After the time, let's assume the completion of one hour, three oranges has gone here, three oranges has come here. After that one hour, what do you observe? We still have five and seven, so there are no observable change. That's what it means. What it totally means is that equilibrium will occur when the rate of the forward reaction, this is the forward reaction, is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. That's when equilibrium will occur. So I can come and say, Equilibrium equilibrium occurs when rate of forward reaction equals to rate of reverse reaction. Are we good? I'm going to explain this with the graph now. What does the rate of forward, what, what does the rate of forward reaction mean? So the rate of the forward reaction is equal to K1 bracket the concentration of A. And the rate of the reverse reaction is equal to K minus 1 back at the concentration of B. Right? We're, good. We're getting somewhere. We said equilibrium will occur when the forward reaction, as the forward reaction, forward reaction is equal to the reverse reaction. Right? Equilibrium occurs when the forward reaction is equal to reverse reaction. At this point, there is no change in the concentration of either A and B. Although something is happening, it's called dynamic equilibrium. Something is happening between both of them, but then there is no really change. Just like what we used here, something is happening. Three is constantly going here. Three is constantly coming here. But at the end product, we discover that we still have five and seven. Because as A loses three oranges to B, B is losing three oranges to A at the same part. Are we good? As A loses three oranges to B, B is losing three oranges to A. So as A is losing three, it's also gaining three. It's complete. As B is losing 3, forming what? Forming, uh, how many here? We have 6 here, right? No, 7 here. As B is losing here, it's also gaining 3 as well. We discover that after 1 hour, we still have 5, we still have 7. Because as it is giving, it is co collecting. So the forward reaction is equal to the reverse reaction. That's when we see equilibrium stable. Equilibrium will occur when the rate of forward reaction equals the rate of reverse reaction. Right? That's what we just said. And the rate of forward reaction, the formula for that is K1. A K1 and the, and the formula for forward reaction is K1 bracket the concentration of A. In equilibrium, concentration depletes a square bracket. Oh, my marker is gone. When we have a bracket like this, it means concentration in equilibrium, right? So we have a bracket like this, it means concentration of A. And the reverse reaction means K minus 1. This one means reverse of the concentration of B, right? So if we mathematically, let's just assume mathematically, Mathematically, we said equilibrium, Kc, that's equilibrium, look at it there, equilibrium constant. The constant will appear when the forward reaction, when forward reaction, uh, reaction forward, equals reverse reaction. That's the reverse of it. That is what happens mathematically. And now let's prove this further. Let's prove this further. If we know that Kc is equal to the forward reaction, right? Uh, let's say reaction forward. The rate of forward reaction, please, rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of reverse reaction. And we know that the rate of the forward reaction is this, that the rate of forward reaction is K1 times the word concentration of A, which is equal to K bar, bar, bar 1 times the word concentration of B. 
we can make this uh, a bit okay we can, we can make it a bit stable by saying our cons uh, uh, a constant equilibrium constant to be equal to let's call it like terms here if i divide both sides and do my equation of like terms i'm going to have k1 forward reaction over the reverse reaction is equal to the concentration of the words b to the concentration of a what that simply means is that equilibrium constant is equal to what the concentration of product concentration of the product over the concentration of the word reactant that's what equilibrium means so look at because b here is our product right and a here is our what reactant so equilibrium will occur when we have the ratio of the four of the product over the reactant because equilibrium the constant is the ratio of the product to the reactant right remember we were saying something we said equilibrium will occur when the forward reaction the rate of the forward reaction equal to the rate of reverse reaction let's use the graph to explain that now if we have this as our graph right this is our graph and let's have our rate here in the y axis we have our rate and in the x axis we have our time right so look at this now a is here let's assume now try to explain this let's assume that we have this is our a that can convert to b and b that can convert to a let's assume we have three moves here and we have zero moves here there's nothing here right if a reaction occurs here you will see that it's going to be a forward reaction because three is pouring into b right the moves are moving to b and there's nothing here we can't have a reverse reaction because there's nothing here we only have three here if we have a constant forward reaction you see that a will be reducing because a is going to be just like we have hot and cold water if you have hot water here and cold water here when you begin to do uh what they call a heat transfer you discover that a point is going to come the two buckets are going to be water warm We're going to have two warm water that point is said to be equilibrium right that's what's happening here if this is hot this is cold this hot water will be pouring into the cold water right as it is pouring into cold water it is losing its heat and as b the cold water is gaining from the hot water it is gaining heat so this guy's heat is coming down and this heat is going up both of them is what they will not be balanced at a point right this is the hot water this is the cold water as hot water you know what the, the temperature of the hot water is very high and the temperature of the cold water is low when we start to do our heat transfer the temperature of the hot water is going to come down and the temperature of the cold water is going to go up both of them are going to be warm at a point equilibrium is set to occur that's what's going to happen so look at a is high here b is zero here so what will happen is that this is a a will lose itself till it becomes constant at this phase right it is pouring itself to b so a is reducing thereby the rate of a the concentration of a is also decreasing as a is decreasing what's happening b is increasing and the concentration of b as well is increasing are we good so let's use uh let me just use another pen let's use another pen for b to deplete b right so this is a starting at a high temperature or a high uh, amount let's use this as our b you discover that b will do what because a is pointing to b b itself will be increasing till both of them becomes constant right so um b will stop increasing when a stops reducing so at this point it's said to be what this point is said to be what equilibrium at this point it's said to be equilibrium because a has stopped reducing uh, a has stopped reducing and b has stopped increasing so both of them a will reduce till it becomes constant b will increase it becomes constant so at this point at this point now look at here at this point you see that there are no observable change there's no change here from here to here there will change from here to here they will change and equilibrium has not occurred but at this point there are no observable change that's what we are saying and there are no observable change in the property of the system with respect to time look at that both of them they are moving at the same point so at this point equilibrium has, has occurred so i'm trying to say that just using the graph to explain it but naturally if we want to uh, mathematically we want to start solving question we should know that equilibrium the formula for equilibrium is the concentration of the product the product over what the concentration of the reactant right let's use uh, something to explain that just to label let's use something to explain what i mean by this all right so let's quickly look at what that means so we said let's assume that we have we already said we have let's assume let's let's just increase the uh, equation this is a plus b giving us an equilibrium of what uh, let's say c 
plus D, right? We have stuff like this, and we say we just establish that equilibrium will occur. For equilibrium to occur, right, the forward reaction will be equal to the reverse reaction. The rate of the forward reaction, please. For equilibrium to occur, one, the rate of forward reaction will be equal to what? Must be equal to the rate of what reverse reaction as whatever is going from here there will be equal to what is coming from there here i just explained that in the former video right so uh, in looking at this we also said that the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration we said this is square bracket for concentration of the what of the product right over what concentration of the reactant right so i will know that for a chemical equation this part is the product and this part is what is the reactant right so uh, how do we how do we really explain this it means that concentration of c times the concentration of d will be over the concentration of a times the concentration of b that's how we explain that right for equilibrium constant that means, and let's assume we have coefficients. We are assuming now that we have coefficient of A here, B here, small c here, and small d. Where these guys are going to find themselves is at the index. So here it's going to be this small c will find itself here, c. This small d will find itself at the index of d. The small a will find itself here, and the small b will find itself. There. So that's how to write an equation for equilibrium constant. The equation for equilibrium constant. In the next video, I'm going to give us questions to explain all of this. We use questions to explain this and to solve questions as regards to equilibrium constant. I hope you understand what we just did. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thank you.